They say I'm slightly mad winning or losing, neither is it a pitiful, woe is me, tragic anecdote of a man whose luck had completely run out. It is what it is. It's fucking comedic. <laughs> but try as I may, I've run out of options. Fucking shit! Fucking noisy bastard! You fucking weak, pathetic, stricken. Oh my god, I can feel your every fiber in my body. So weak and meek and cowardly. Ooh, I feel sick. Just being inside you, I feel sick. I moved to Australia a few years ago with my work. Hoping to find new friends, hoping to find a man who had no link to my past or knew any of my fuck-ups I'd made along the way and, and it was great for the first few years. I had the house, I had the car, I had some land instead of the pissed tiny junkyard I had in my two up, two down semi in Essex, London. You're not cryptic, thing. you are. It is fucking erotic. But then, and the voices came back. And my medication was fucked. The doctors had no idea what dosage to put me on. And I, and I, and I, and I began to self-medicate and I, I couldn't stand the side effects. I wanted to feel normal. And I wanted it too much. I was desperate. The friends who adored me at work were slowly but surely avoiding me. I would randomly burst out with mad, inappropriate comments about Australian politics and how patriotic they all are comparing them to the British National Party members, telling them at times that they had nothing to worry about. Australia wasn't going to be taken over by extreme Islamists and Shari laws being introduced. They weren't suddenly going to be facing a huge epidemic of foreigners taking over their country, like they all seemed to fear. But that wasn't true. They weren't fearing that, and I was becoming twisted and convoluted. I loved my Australian friends, but you wouldn't have guessed it at the time. And if you guess the moon tonight I will lick the surface of the sun You will eat a planet just for me Masters of the universe will be me and you My with it anymore. Uh, stop wallowing in your own self-pity and just fucking do what it is you need to do because we know you need to do it, you cross-sucker! <laughs> then I had a momentary lapse of tranquility. The voices had dispersed and left me enough time to find Stephen. Stephen from my work. He had not come out to everyone and, and he would look at me from time to time in a way that only gay men understand, in a flirtatious way. I knew he liked me. He was sweet, a lot more shy than me and almost 20 years younger than me, but he got me. I was fighting dichotomous, erratic emotions and thoughts. I'm so 
just good. Just please help. Help me. Free me. Free me. Now you fucking loser. You fucking loser. Help me, please. What is there to look for you, can't you see it? Can't you see you've got nothing left? There's nothing you've got to the end. The end of it all. There's nothing left for you. There's nowhere else to go. There's no one else to know. You're dead already. You're a fucking walking dead man. A loser dead man. Stephen knew me more than anyone I'd met before. We were amazing together. It was great conversations, exceeded by wild, libidinous, raucous sex, and followed by even more conversations and then even more sex. It could have worked. But I'm lonely. I'm scared. I can't go back to the UK because I'll have nothing. I can breathe here, there's, there's space to live. But I'm getting worse. If I go back to the UK, I'll be sectioned. I'm done. The voices are slowly starting to make more sense every day. I tried to take some meds the other day, but I'm not sure I want the voices to stop. They're guiding me forward. I don't have the ability to do that on my own anymore. I left me to be replaced by another being, another entity. Just like everyone leaves me, I left myself. Internally, when we can just sleep and stop the pain. Mm -hmm. 